Hello everyone, my name is Quentin Worm and I'm a technical specialist here at ATG. And today I'm going to show you how to convert your inventor assemblies into Revit families. Have you ever wanted to create a complex Revit family? Well, if you have inventor, it makes it a lot easier. And if you don't have an inventor, well, good luck to you. In this webinar, I will show you how to set up your assembly for Revit structure, how to export your assembly. There's three different file types that you can export to, how to import your new assembly into Revit as a .rfa, and then to create parameters for it. The three different file types is the .dart, dot RFA, which is pretty much the Revit family, and dot .ifc, which is like a completely new model. So when you insert it into the Revit project, it's basically a new model that you have to link into it. It's a little bit more complicated. And then the dot .adsk, which is primarily used for civil 3D. Now let's get to the demo. Now in Inventor, I'm just gonna open up a ceiling fan assembly that I have created. I usually like to turn on the shadows with edges to make it look a little nicer. And once you have your assembly all finished and everything the way you want it, what I like to do is constrain the most center point of my assembly, which is my shaft here. So I'll have it opened up for the three planes and I will make constraints from the origin of the whole assembly to the origin of the shaft. Put it at zero. And then we'll go on to the XY plane. Put that at zero as well. And then lastly, we'll do the XZ plane for the top of the assembly. And now that I have that all centered up, it will make it a lot easier in Revit once we have that put into a family to constrain and move it around. Now that we have it all constrained, we'll go to the Environments tab. Under Begins panel, we'll go to BIM Content. Then under the Publish panel, we'll go to export building components. And then when you click on it, you'll always get this pop-up about shrink wrapping your assembly to reduce the complexity of it, which I always click no because I kind of need the complexity of the curves and different lofts that I've done. But if you click yes, it'll pop up this shrink wrap properties. And you can actually come in here and tell it which ones to turn off. So if I had maybe interior components that aren't really shown in the model, I can just come here and turn that off, which I don't. I usually just leave it as is. So I'll just click no. And then we'll get the save as option. And here you'll see the three different file types. I've already created one for the ADSK and IFC for us to mess with later. But right now I'm just gonna create the RFA file. So you just pick where you wanna save it to, file name. I usually like to add that it's for Revit so I don't get it confused with the other ones. 
and then I'll just save it. And then I'll give you this export progress bar. And once the exporting is finished, we'll get a, another pop-up about a report on the assembly that we are exporting. I don't really worry about the reports, so I usually click no, but if you click yes, it'll open up this web page, tell you when you created it, where the source file that you are exporting it from, and then where you exporting it to. Tells you that it's gonna be a Revit family, who created it, the units, how big the oversized box is it, how long it took, how many faces, and if you have conductor, conduction, conductors, you'll have the number of conductors and links and everything down here. Now that that's done, you can just click finish BIM component and that's all we do in Inventor. So now we'll switch over to the Revit side of it. And so at the main page of your Revit, if you click on families open, we can pretty much just go straight to the location of the saved file that we did. So mine's under ceiling fan and here we have it, ceiling fan assembly for Revit. And there's nothing fancy to open it, you just open it straight as a Revit family. And as you can see, when I open it, it opens straight to the center of the reference planes that Revit already has created, which is why I constrained the origin of the assembly and the origin of the centermost part, because if I was to move this off to the side and try to move it back in place, I don't get any snaps on the circles for me to easily move it. I can snap to like these defined lines, but that's not gonna help me center it up. And so that is why I like to constrain the origins. And if we go to the front view, you can see that it's already set at level zero. So if I was to just go ahead and put this in a Revit project, it will automatically put it at reference level zero and then I can just go into the properties and set the height that way. Or what I like to do is add in a reference plane for a parameter. This is kind of how you can add into Revit, the edit it. Let me just create this parameter real quick and I'll just call it ceiling height. I always like to make it an instance parameter so I can change it on the fly. We'll just set it at eight foot. And then after I create it, I'll just add in a distance dimension select the dimension and under the labels drop down we'll click ceiling height and what i always like to do is align the plane with the top of my assembly and lock it in because if i don't lock this in and change this to nine foot the ceiling moves but the part does not. So I always like to lock it in. And if like this one's a little too complex for editing it in here, as you can see in the 3D view, the really complex geometry parts kind of come in 
half tone and invisible. That's because Revit can't really keep up with the geometry that Inventor can create. So if I was to explode this part right now, it will delete the geometries that it can't create. So I lose part of my model. So I just leave it as non-exploded. But you can come in and edit this any way you want to an ex to a certain point with this model that I created since it's kind of more complex than a regular box that I can add in to or move later on. So now that I have that created, you can also, the same way we added in this RFA, you can open the ADSK as well. Oops, wrong file. And it opens almost the same way as the RFA file, but for some reason it has this weird box around it. But if you change it to wireframe, you can still see it in there. Now that I have those two created, I'm going to make a quick little room for my fans to go into. So we'll just make a quick room, put a little floor in there, and then add a ceiling. And then let's go back to the first one, the RFA, we'll load it into the project. As you can see, it just pops in nicely, just wherever you want. And it'll automatically be at that eight foot that I set. But as you can see, the ADSK, you can't really see it in any of the reference views. You can only kind of see it in the 3D view once you turn the wire lines on. But if I load this into the project, you can see you still can't kind of see it. But if I make a section cut, go to the section, you can see that box there. But if you change the detail level to medium, it will show up. And then I can just put the elevation from level to eight foot and pops right up there. But the tricky one is when you insert the IFC file. Because whenever you insert it, it basically creates a whole new model project in here. And it's hard to mess with it because when it comes in, it's always like this. It's just a bunch of level grids and everything, but if you bind the link, and I always leave this as is because I don't need any of the levels or grids. So I'll just okay all this, all the materials, and it will just move it as a regular fan now. But you can see it's got all the lines and geometries every single curve. But then it kind of acts like the other two. I'll just move this into the middle, go to the section. And it likes to be finicky on the elevation, changing the offset of it. It doesn't seem to work, but you can kind of move it close. And what I like to do is use the 
a line tool and it will give me where I want it. It shows it at eight foot and then if I try to change it to seven foot, it deletes it. It kind of does a weird thing with it. So I'll just move it with the align tool. And that's how you get the your assembly from Inventor into a Revit file. Now I have some other families that I created. One is just like a simple little box that if I needed to add on to it or change it, I can just create some more extrusions if I wanted to. So that's one of the ways I can come in here and add things to it. So that's one way I can convert it to a Revit assembly and then just start adding my own extrusions and whatnot to it. You can kind of do it both ways because if like this one's a simple little box I created, I can actually explode it and then resize it if I wanted to. Can add in some dimensions to make it more of what I need. So that way if you have an old inventor assembly that you're bringing in and need some change that's manageable in Revit, you can do that. But it also might still just be easier to maneuver it in Inventor since depending on how complex you're wanting to get with the changes that you're needing. But you can actually change it in Revit if you want. All right, if that's all the questions I have, thank you for joining. Hope you were able to learn something from this. Thank you and have a great day.